And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. message mean? The hour of his judgment has come. We are living in a time of turmoil on this planet, wars, rumors of wars, natural disasters, riots, anger. Is this message relevant for our time? How does it fit into the present day situation? Let's talk about it. Where do I go, Lord? If I go back to the time of Peter, when the apostles and Jesus were together, and Jesus asked the question, what do these people say that I am? And some say, you are Elijah, and some say, one of the prophets. And Jesus asked, but what do you say? And Peter answered, you are the Son of the living God. He acknowledged him as the Messiah. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. It was the Spirit of God that gave you this insight. If we realize that this is truth, then we have to accept it. Later on, when many disciples left Jesus, when he said to them, that you have to eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of God. In other words, incorporate His character, internalize His being, open that door so that He can come in and live His life in you. Because the righteousness that we have is not our own righteousness, but His righteousness which He lives inside of us. Even our sanctification, is 100% from the Son of God, lest we should boast. Beat your breast and say, how will I receive this great salvation? How can I be forgiven? And as Jesus looked at that publican, 
He said, that one went home justified and not the other one who boasted of his good works. These are the issues we must decide. So when the Bible says, come out of her, my people, then whom should I be associated with? Isn't it the woman, the church, that keeps the commandments of God and holds to the testimony of Jesus? Isn't it the woman who has the injunction to preach the three angels' messages to every nation and tribe and people? on this entire planet? We have to ask ourselves, is there an organization, is there a church that claims that the commandments of God are binding, including the seventh day Sabbath? We have to ask ourselves, is there a church that has a universal mission? We have to ask ourselves, is there a church that claims that it has the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy? Is there a church that preaches the three angels' messages in their entirety? Those are the criteria. And you can search high and low. There is only one that qualifies on every single point. It also has to appear at the right time in history, at the end of the 1,260 days. It cannot be one that was there before because the devil is wroth with her because she keeps the commandments and has the testimony. And she is the remnant of what went before. Only the Seventh-day Adventist Church qualifies in all those parameters. They claim the commandments are binding. They keep the Seventh-day Sabbath. They are a worldwide movement and they preach the three angels' messages in their entirety. Now we are filming this in this desolate island with so much destruction by volcanic activity and so much beauty intermingled. It's as if God is using this island to show how his power and his destructive force is tempered by beauty and mercy and the benevolence of God. This island has an interesting history. Originally, it was thought that it had been occupied by the Vikings from Norway, but research has shown that the original settlers on this island were probably the Celts who escaped when Rome conquered their nations and took over those islands and areas where they came from, Ireland and the areas surrounding it. And the Celts were Sabbath-keeping Christians. And those first settlers probably settled here and they called it Yeshua land, Ishland. Ishua, which became Iceland or Ishland. Later on, the tribes of Norway, the Vikings, came and settled and originally, apparently, they tolerated each other. There was an intermingling migration and the situation is not exactly the same. But here, the issue of the Sabbath and the Sunday was one that existed from the beginning. And in the early 1900s, they actually had a vote in this very place as to which day should be prominent because this discussion had again came up. And the Sunday won by the smallest of margins. And so it is a symbol of what will happen to humanity. The issue of authority. Who has authority over my life? Is it Rome? Is it the Bible? Is it the commandments of Rome? Is it the commandments of the Bible? This issue will come to the fore again and again and again. Then the Sabbath will be kept, then it will be crushed, as with the Valdensians, as with the Albigensians, 
as with the church of the Celtic church, as with the church of the East, as with the Thomasite Christians. Christians that were formed after the preaching of the Apostle Thomas in India that kept the Sabbath. Again, they were crushed, as with the Ethiopian church that kept the Sabbath. And again, the Sabbath was crushed and the Sunday was put in place. We are at the same point in history. We will again have this clash, but it's not just a clash of a day. It is a clash of ideologies. Righteousness by faith or righteousness by works. Which one has the ascendancy in your heart? Which one has the ascendancy in my heart? That is the choice. Come out of her, my people. Stand with those who believe these things, who preach these things. I am a Seventh-day Adventist. Not because I believe that we are better than anyone else. I am merely a Seventh-day Adventist because of the biblical criteria which point to that church. And I'm a Protestant. I'm a Lutheran of Lutherans. I'm a Methodist of Methodists. I'm a Calvinist of Calvinists. But I keep the commandments of God. And I cling to the faith of Jesus. I ask you to join me.